guys, welcome back to Car and Soul Kids. Well, um, what am I doing? Why am I shouting the flaps in front of you? Well, I'm removing a bit of the fat spray, the treatment I used uh, earlier this year, since I had a severe scale infestation, which never seemed to cease. So uh, I just had to do something about it, and uh, the fat leaf gloss spray really seemed to be the solution at the time. But now I need leaves to photosynthesize a bit more, and um, yeah. As it's about time for them to be showered anyway, to do this a little bit more often, but I, I really needed to see that the scale were gone <laughs> before I showered up the treatment. Yes, and from now on, for a while, I'm going to use the um, neem oil solution on these guys instead. Yeah, so in this video, there's going to be a Kitlea um, maintenance video on a few. I'm not satisfied with the setups and maybe something else going on or... Maybe I'm not satisfied with the development on them and uh, health and so on, so I'm going to do something about it. So that's what this video is going to be about today. Here's the dirty window. And something you really should take into account when growing orchids. The dirtier the window, the less light reaches flowers. So, it may not look dirty in this light, but I can show you it's really dirty on the outside. The inside I already... Uh, made. I'm going to redo it today anyways. So while I'm at it and uh, yeah, can you see the gorgeous little run up there a calsum from Squirt uh, Orchidine. I think I had it for two years now, about two years. And uh, now she's, yeah, I think she's doubled her size since I got her. And she's always been sitting in Sema Hydro since I, since I first reported her immediately after getting her, I think. Yeah, straining herself out since she was put into this position in another room. A little bit more humidity, a little bit more light, a little bit more space for that matter. Really great looking orchid. Now, let's just wait for its blooms, yeah? Since light seems to be key and not so much the fertilizer nor the medium it's sitting in. So, fingers crossed for this one to create some blooms. Yeah, in the near future, yes? And the other one sitting next to her is a very, very huge size Cattleya. It's my Cattleya Monte Eleganti from Swart Orchidine as well. I had it for a couple of years now. Never once bloomed, but it tried to bloom last summer, I think. Uh, directly from in between the leaves. She created some small, 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 small buds even in a cluster. Which the kale caught and snagged off. And I was so sad since I was so excited for its first time blooming. But... This orchid outsmarted the scale. Look, this time she created a sheath. <laughs> now, that's not really the reason. Or, could it be? Yeah, it's what's in its, as lies behind its inheritance. Sometimes it comes out with a sheath. And the next blooming, no sheath. Or even, at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it's smart. So this time, I, um, I can put a little bit more hope and faith into this one to really be able to create some buds and blooms, of course. So... This is a good achievement. And this is one of the orchids I didn't report or, uh, I mean, divide or anything. Since she didn't have so much scale, so I didn't have to touch this one. So look at her. What a difference. That's why some of my orchids are delayed. The bloomings this time. Or will not bloom this season. Yeah, but I had to do it. I really had to do it. So get rid of it. All the insects. So I had to pay the price. Not seeing so many blooms this season, but there will be, of course, this autumn as always. Yes? Now, let's clean the windows. Now, in this vacation and everything, I finally got a little bit more time on my hands to um, manage my orchids a bit more than I normally have time to do. They are uh, increasing a bit now in numbers. There's a little bit more work to do. Um, and just because you're sitting in the semi hydro doesn't mean that you don't have to. Uh, do some maintenance on them every once in a while. They are growing out of the pots. Sometimes you need to clean up the roots. And if you didn't do so already, I usually wait um, six months or perhaps one year. <laughs> yeah, that happened as well. Um, to clean up the roots. So the root system, the old root system will eventually die off. Or shall, uh, yeah, it will die off in a week <laughs> if put into a water reservoir. So that's why I, I usually flush them the first couple of weeks after being transitioned into Samadra. So it helps a bit, but uh, yeah, they still need to be cleaned off. But anyway, 
what else is there to say today? I uh, took the opportunity with a little bit more spare time on my hands while on vacation to mount my old Kiklea Genmaniae as well. It's a one year or a little bit more old um, Orchids and More purchase. And she's growing well in my cabinet. I showed this one to you before. Look at her newest growth. Yeah, I mounted this uh, kind of a new purchase from Orchids and More my, from a June order. And she's doing fabulously well. New root tips, green root tips, all over the place. Everything's green, everything's growing. New growth to the side, and yeah. That's when I decided to uh, get this one out from his pot. So she, yeah, a lot of water fell down into her pot and stayed there as I was spraying the orchids above her. So, um, no, 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 yeah, it could have uh, ended really uh, dramatically. So, um, but she's in growing stage as well. Just mounted her. The Clea Genmaniae. <laughs> and I've been doing some other stuff. This one is the uh, Prostichia cochleada. This one is seen in many of my Bloom and Spike videos. This Thrip Magnet. And Mice Magnet as well. Uh, terrible foliage really. And it drinks a lot of water. And I've been studying other YouTube channels uh, lately. And I saw that there <laughs> Prostichia cochleadas are much wider and producing a lot of new canes every year but this one is still kind of young a uh, couple of years old i have this one uh, for a couple of years now and she's always been producing about one new growth each year which she blooms from for about eight months in a row and here's yeah she's still in bud but now finally she's starting to uh, take after the other ones <laughs> yay i'm gonna have a wide one as well with uh, blooms on several kings at the same time. Since she blooms on each king, she never ever skips a blooming. No matter how terrible her foliage really do look. And this made me really happy. So she's going to be repotted into the same sized pot. But this one is a little, little teeny weeny bit wider. With some air holes. Air circulation holes. Yeah, she's been used to be sitting in this kind of setup, so I won't change it. I think she's growing on nicely. So why change a concept that's working? All right. So she's going to be reported into my favorite mixture. Coconut husk fiber, charcoal, some bark, red mix bark from a bag from a grocery store, and some cut sphagnum moss and perlite. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite mix. Works for most parts. My orchids in here with good results. I can make an update on her progress in a few months time. So away you go. I have this beautiful Kitle orchid. Look at the size of her. <laughs> Look at the width of her leaves. It's just yeah, just as wide as my the palm of my hand. Yo, no, not only my palm. The whole hand fits her leaf really good one. I transitioned her into some hydro some time ago, perhaps one year ago, and only to discover the blackening to the base. Can you see it uh, on a few of her canes? To the middle, the older ones. And I got a little bit scared. She's had a lot of scale as she was sitting in her clay pot with this kind of mixture, moss mixture. She was thriving although she was thriving in that kind of setup. But I needed to get rid of the scale, as I always say. So I had to wash her, yeah, the whole root system off and clean her off. As I did a uh, soft repotting when I first got her and saved a bit of the sphagnum moss to the middle, the old sphagnum moss. So uh, yeah, the scale really could thrive in there and have a real scale party. Um, this blackening may be some scale damage tissue damage only. Otherwise, this one would have been rotting off totally by now. But she's still alive and kicking and giving us a good new growth to the side. A little bit bent and twisted. Yeah, but still good growth. And another little sheath in there. A little second gro growth. And she also produced her first, very first sheath 
ever, I think. And this is my care, so I thought this one would bloom, but maybe she needed one or two more years. Since this one is a huge one, so perhaps she's still a baby. <laughs> Elsie or Glaze Grand. But what do I want to do with this one? Yeah. She needs to be put into a larger container. And I just happen to have one here. More suitable size. So I'm going to start with this one. And after this one, I will continue with this one. I don't have a pot large enough for this one to upsize it, this, this hybrid. So I needed her pot. <laughs> That's why I have to deal with this Elsie or Glaze Grand first. All right. Yes. Clean off some dead roots, of course. But there are some good ones coming here. Everywhere. I'm not so scared. It's the very right time to do it. I have to get a good grip onto it. So I won't damage her. Yay. Goodly good. Out you go. Beauty. My beauty. Still get a good grip where the newest growth on. Yeah, there will be some cleaning to do. This old bad root, for example. Well, it turned out to be a lot more to clean than expected. But yeah, why not? I mean, I never cleaned this one up after I transitioned it. So what to expect, really, with such a huge layer? So I think I... Uh, this one more. I think I almost got them all. I might as well just grab the opportunity to, to do it. A proper clean up when I'm at it. Then we can wait um, a few, uh, perhaps two years. The next clean up. Uh. All right, let's uh, let's uh, make do with this. Um, this. Uh, um, Clean up, I think. Um, otherwise, otherwise, I can I can stay here until midnight. Yeah. What else? Um, yeah, it's getting wider and wider. This one. As you can see, I'm trying to make it a little bit more narrow. Now this little, uh, as I call it, stripe. Now we're left with only good roots. Well adapted to semi hybrid. Yes, and that's what we want. So the wick is in place. Yeah, I pull this wick a, a bit, a little bit too high up here. Well, I've got a purpose. There's a meaning to it. I'm going to put it on top of the the top layer of the lecker. Yes, to hold the moisture to the surface a little bit longer. I could have a wick to the other side as well, but I think this will be enough. Yes, it could be a good time if I wanted to uh, split her, divide her. Good time now, here somewhere over the rhizome. But I'll wait, I'll wait, yes. It takes a toll on an orchid, like a clear orchid, to be divided. It really, really does, so... Um, I need to uh, get these guys more close to each other to make it a more narrow plant. So, the larger one, the larger pot will hold this one for a good amount of time this time. So, I think this is uh, much, much better. So, good. And where do I need the wicking uh, properties most. Yeah, do its newest part. The newest roots are going to come out here. Yeah, now it's time to uh, fill it up with some lecker and chuckle. Yeah. As for this one, a gorgeous little um, hybrid which bloomed for me for the first time. No, for its second time. Uh, this uh, this um, Christmas, I think, around Christmas or winter at least. She's going to do it again. Yeah, her blooms comes out without a sheath, as you can see. Loveliest blooms, even better than I remember them. 
in colour and shape, size and scent. Yeah, look here. Can you see inside here? This one? There's a little, little, uh, kind of a little bud <laughs> trying to emerge from there, so. But she needs a new, uh, larger pot. Look, this won't hold her. So, I'm gonna make a softy in. The other ones, Elsie Old Grace Grant's old container. So, this is gonna be able to stay here for two years. No, one year, at least, <laughs> until I get some more of the huge size pots. <laughs> Transparent pots again. Yes. And now, over to something amazing. Declare Mossy Eye. Love of my life, my precious. <sighs> Unfortunately, covered with scale and divided in January. Uh, six months ago, about six, seven months ago now. She didn't like sitting in semi-hypro. She didn't like being divided. She didn't like being reported. She didn't like anything. But uh, no matter how bad state she was in, she bloomed. She finished her blooming three days ago. I know I shouldn't have let her bloom, but this piece is... Um, not a good piece anyway. I, I don't even think this piece is going to survive. I was thinking about uh, cutting the spike in the full pride. The blooms were at the best, but um, I didn't. So I forgot it and now we're left with this. No roots at all. Nothing. It's a bad piece, really. But this piece... It's gorgeous. And I sold one at the lottery, the small piece. And yeah, that one is doing great. The new growth and some good roots at somebody else's place. So now some new roots are emerging. A good time to be reported. And what else? The back bulbs, the piece that I put into the cabinet, my cultivation cabinet, um, to provide some better humidity to, um, yeah, not having the um, pseudobulbs shrivel up far too much. So we can take in a little bit of moisture through it without any roots. And it worked. It really worked. Um, and, yeah, and it put out a new growth. And the thing is, she's um, on its way in to the cork slab. <laughs> but now she's going to be um, removed from this. And I can use this mount for something else. Yeah. For a moment, I was thinking about keeping this Kitlea mount, but uh, I changed my mind. <laughs> yeah. So, I think this part is going to be put into the uh, pot as well. Never mind. If it rots off or something never happens, well, it's just going to sit there. We shall see. So, She's not going to be in semi-hydro this time. She's going to get her basic setup, basic treatment. Yeah, everything is totally dead here. No point in having these guys. They won't even work as an anchor. They are too short, so I'm not serving any purpose to this one at all. But I, what I want to do is spray the base here with this little mild pesticide just in case of some scale and that's what's gonna happen to this one as well yeah not too much on the roots though so that's where she got to scale to the base in the glorious setup in a clay pot which I had her in before yeah these roots are longer these old dead roots can work as an anchor for this orchid into the pot doesn't matter so, good. What pot to use and what kind of media? Yeah. Clay pot. Well, let go to the bottom. She's going to have a quite shallow root system, this one. And now I'm not going to be able to see them, to see the progress. 
But uh, never mind. I know that she's going to thrive in her old setup again. But this poor root. Well, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to save it. Maybe if I dig under here. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm able to save it. Great. Yeah, it was a humidifier you heard <laughs> turned on in my um, cabinet. Sounds like it's gonna fail any minute. <laughs> yeah, but it's not. Anyway, uh, where can we see something else? This one came out from this, the larger one. This one is not gonna produce anything. Uh, I don't think there will be anything new coming from this part ever. Never, ever. I'm going to use this uh, biological charcoal. Let it cut into small pieces. Totally great. She will get a lot of spag moss, since it's a clay pot. And I'm going to cut it in small pieces, small, small, small pieces. So it won't gather up in uh, clusters. It's going to be some perlite, quite a lot of perlite. Perlite will hold the moisture and it will also make it a little bit airy in there. And if there's going to be some media left over, I want to use it for some other orchids. As I said, this is my special recipe. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of bark, it's ready mix, will do, it's not a bad mix. By any means. So, once I only used uh, perlite and it was working out so, so, so fine. As it holds moisture. I can already see that this pot won't hold her. It won't hold her. <laughs> Quite deep layer of liquor beads to the bottom. Yes. Some media, Boop. not far too much. And this piece, as I said, uh, maybe there will be something coming here, but I have an idea to put this piece in to the middle. So in case of some new growth from this one, the one the cane she bloomed from recently, the next blooming is gonna be to the middle. Yes, now let's see, what about this one? Yeah, also to the middle. One more to the middle, one to the side. Yes. And this one is, as I said, it's not going to produce much. So uh, what to do? We got nothing to this direction. Um, but there will be inside there a lot, so... Yeah, maybe like this. I think this is the best solution. Best way to place them. So now I tie them together before I put it into the pot. This one will be here, going out here. And this next one's going to go up there, of course. This one's going to go to the middle. And this new one going to be inside the middle. It's going to be a better blooming. Blooms widely spread, not only to the sides. One here and one there and one to the back. No, 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 no. This one is going to be a great blooming since it never skips a blooming. When it's about time for it to bloom in June, July, it never skips it, as you saw. No energy at all. It's still triggered it to create buds in this old sheath. And this one is tied here and may produce something here since this one is the last one it bloomed from. So, down you go into the pot. And, um, yes, and I need to be careful with the fragile roots, not to break the tips. And this one won't be, um, <laughs> this one, yeah, like this a bit up, so we can have some space for next year's growth and so on. No more semi-hydro for this one. Didn't work, actually. She uh, dropped her root system and it was too dry for her to create a new root system. She just didn't want to do it. 
Now let's get rid of the scale catching parts. Sheets everywhere. We don't need them. Like this. Um, all the sheets to, um, to the kings are already gone. Long gone. So I'm going to stake her up. Make her a little bit more tidy. And you're going to see the finished result on this one. In a sec. Elsie or Grace Grant is um, cleaned up and repotted into a larger pot, the largest one there is out there. So next year uh, we need to divide her. I did my very best to make her more narrow, but this is what um, this is the result. Not much space here. Well, it depends on in what direction this new growth will throw out its next shoot. Maybe it will be here. No, no, no. Well, <laughs> you should stay positive, but yeah, they seem to do the opposite of, <laughs> of what you really want it to do. Anyway, a little sheath. Let's see if it's time for her. If she's matured now, if it's her time to really show us this gorgeous white blooms with lovely, lovely uh, purplish centre. Her parents are... Kitlea Persepolis and um, Kitlea Mildred Rives. Yeah, this variety has many cultivars awarded such. So I'm not sure which cultivar this is. It only says all glaze grand. So, well, we shall be surprised when this one decides to bloom. And Kitlea Mossiae into a clay pot and into a decorative outside container to hold the moisture a bit more, a bit longer. And I'm only going to start by spraying the top layer a little bit around the uh, edges of the pot to keep it a little bit more moist until I see that roots are going down. Uh, yeah, since I cannot see roots anymore, but I couldn't before either, since this one never, never, never produced a good root system in its semi-hydro setup. No, no root system at all, as a matter of fact. So let's hope for her now to create some good bloomings all over the place from now on. So I did my very best. Yes. And this one is also reported. Prostechia cochleata. Yeah. With her two coming new growth. I won't cover them. And she's flushed. So I can it will become too wet there for her. Uh, yeah, two new growth this time. So she's progressing. And she's been sprayed, so her leaf set is looking a little bit more healthy now. So, and you guys, that will be all for today. So this video won't turn three hours long. Ah, uh, yeah. It can easily become very long when I'm at it. So, thanks for watching, and we shall talk soon. Thanks for being here. Bye-bye.